All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking about real music in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. All right, um, before I talk about Jeff Scott Soto uh, and Journey, I'm going to uh, promote Jeff Scott Soto. This is his album, Wide Awake in My Dreamland. That's his dreamland, not your dreamland. Um, crazy picture of JSS on the cover. What's inside is great music. In fact, uh, this is a two CD set. Uh, it contains a studio album and a live performance. And you can see that Jeff wrote all over my CD. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be worth more or less. <laughs> you know what's really cool about this, though? My name is in this. Um, what is it, like the liner notes or or where he thanks a whole bunch of people? He thanks me. He thanks me for all of the things that I do, which is really very little for him. Um, but I am going to set the record straight uh, in this uh, video here about how Jeff uh, got terminated by journey and and i've talked about this on multiple occasions the journey junkies they don't really care that much about jeff scott soto i say without jss um there is no bridge from steve Ajeri to arnel pineda and part of me thinks that jss may have been a better long-term singer for the band um he has an epic stage presence uh, even though his voice isn't the classic tenor, um, it's a wide range. It's a, a baritone, a whatever. It's it's all over the place. But he could sing all of the Journey material, and thus that is why um, he had joined the band. And he was in the band for 11 months, and the band had announced on their website that he was the new lead singer. They had named him. It was official Welcome, please, Jeff Scott Soto as uh, the new lead singer of the band Journey. Now, uh, this relates to what Ross Valerie had to say in a new interview that he did with Andy Green over at Rolling Stone. Um, Andy Green says this, you brought in Jeff Scott Soto. He's a great singer. Now, what Andy did, does here is he leads the witness a bit. He says, but maybe not quite right for that material. Um, uh, Jeff was doing a great job. If you find videos, which there are a couple of videos that have been uploaded to YouTube where uh, Jeff is singing with Journey, uh, he's, he's absolutely knocking it out of the park. Now, this is what Ross Valerie says, and some of this needs to be corrected. Uh, because I know firsthand that the information is incorrect. Um, this is what Ross Valerie says. Uh, Jeff is a fine singer and a great entertainer, but it was just a little different. And in the process of writing new material for another album... Okay, so stop right there. So if Jeff wasn't named the new lead singer of the band why would he be writing new material for another album? Why would that even be a thing? I mean, Je Jeff wouldn't have any involvement in that if he was just a fill-in singer. All right, so let me continue. He says here, Jeff and the other writers didn't really fall into sync. There was not enough in common. So Jeff certainly stepped in and did what he did on short notice he says, what a guy. <laughs> now, one thing that Valerie does throughout this interview is he's just Mr. Everything's the best. Every It's like that character on Friends there by Alec Baldwin, I think, played the character. And, you know, he would smell coffee. And this is the greatest, most aromatic beans I've ever, you know, and it was just the whole interview. And, and that's fine. It's good. Um, Ross wants to keep his uh, doors and options open. You know, I think he's hoping that maybe Journey will say, hey, yeah, come on back. I don't think they're going to do that. I think Todd Jensen is doing a great job, and it would be good to have another original guy in the band. Um, but from what I know, and I do know stuff because I've asked some questions, 
um, nobody is considering uh, bringing Ross Valerie back because Ross was part of a coup. That's why they had to settle. Uh, he made a great deal in the settlement, apparently, but he still and Smith and, you know, allegedly Steve Perry, but mostly it was just um, Ross Valerie and Steve Smith wanted golden parachutes and um, maybe they deserved it. And I think they got something out of it. I mean, Don't Stop Believing the other day was named like the greatest song in history. So <laughs> these guys, they're going to have money for a very long time and their kids and grandkids and it's going to go on for a while. So anyway, um, getting back to the point here. So this stuff about writing new material for another album. Now, let me say this. I am not speaking for Jeff Scott Soto. I want to make that clear. Jeff does not want to talk about this stuff anymore. He's tired of it, but he's told me on several occasions that um, there were no writing sessions. In fact, Jeff wanted to write with these guys. Apparently, he made an effort to get together with probably John and Neil. And it's not that they blew him off, but they basically said something like, well, we weren't expecting to do this right now, Jeff. You know, and you ever show up at an event and you're like the only person there or you're really excited about it and everybody else is like yeah uh, you're showing an, just a, an amazing amount of enthusiasm here and it's one of those moments where you know you're just thinking to yourself um i probably shouldn't have come here i'm i'm the only one that really cares about this stuff and at the time, I think these guys were very indecisive. They probably didn't let Jeff in on the fact that they were indecisive, but he was the only one that made the overture to writing new material. But again, I go back to, okay, if you're thinking about writing new material with this guy and he's thinking that you want to write new material with him, then obviously... He's got to be a permanent member of the band at that point. So all this stuff about, nah, he just didn't fit. Um, by the way, he doesn't, uh, Ross doesn't say anything about his vocals. He doesn't say, oh, he just had the wrong vocals. No, he's, he's saying that Jeff, this is just another narrative here. Jeff and the other writers didn't really fall into sync, which isn't true. So I wanted to um, say that on behalf of Jeff Scott Soto and also say that Jeff doesn't really want to have anything to do with this stuff anymore because I think, number one, he's disappointed that nobody has said, hey, Jeff, sorry, dude. And again, I know he's getting along with people. I know he communicates with people within the organization um, and he's on better terms with people, but you know, this is rock history and this guy is such a great singer and was so close, honestly, um, to making it much bigger than he's made it. He's a blue collar guy. He has to keep working and uh, he's in new projects all the time. He's in something now called, um, art of anarchy, which is pretty heavy duty stuff. Um, they had a video come out, which was was really interesting, and people should look it up again. Art of Anarchy might not be the journey junkies uh, cup of tea. It's pretty heavy stuff, and the subject matter is is pretty heavy as well. But um, this is the versatility of um, Jeff Scott Soto. He can he can sing heavy metal um, and real dark heavy metal, and he could sing you know Motown if he wanted to. I told him the other day. Um, after I watched the video for, I think it's Slash and uh, Brian Johnson from ACDC. They just put out a blues song, like an old school blues song. And I said, dude, you should do a blues album. <laughs> Somebody should recruit Jeff Scott Soto for a blues album. Now, sometimes, you know, people will listen to me. Like I heard that Journey just added Feeling That Way and Anytime to their set list. And they have uh, Dean, John, and Arnell singing on it and it's brilliant it's almost the way i told them they should do it so every so often you know journey will listen to me uh, maybe just by coincidence i don't know 
uh, I guess people do watch my videos. Neil has uh, sent me feedback on videos from time to time. Not recently because they're busy. They, they've got to they've got to keep touring anyway, folks. So um, this true story here is Jeff Scott Soto was told uh, that he was out of the band and Kevin Cronin, of all people from REO Speedwagon, told him this. Um, and he was like, you haven't heard, dude? Yeah, um, Journey's looking for a singer and uh, you're not in the band anymore. Or he probably said, dude, sorry to hear about um, you uh, not getting that gig with Journey or keeping it or whatever. Man, <laughs> it's like, again, being told by a third party, you know that job you used to have? Well, you don't have it anymore. I don't know if you knew about this. I'm sure you already know, right? <clears throat> wow. Bad way to find out. So again, Ross Valerie uh, maybe wasn't privy to what was going on in the inner circle. Maybe he was just making some statements here. He was trying to be Mr. Happy throughout the interview. And um, it wasn't the songwriting. That, that, that's not it, Ross. That's not what um, happened. It was... They felt they needed to go in a different direction with the singer. Um, and I think Andy Green, again, tried to lead Ross in that direction. But we really don't know 100% what the reasoning was because maybe the band just felt they weren't going to find a better singer than uh, Jeff, but they were still unsure as to what they should do. Um all I know is uh, Jeff Scott Soto was winning over audiences because his stage presence is just massive. He's just a great, and Ross got that right. He says here, he's a great entertainer, and, and he is. And he knows how to be a rock singer. He knows how to um, be a lead rock singer, a front man. He's in Trans-Siberian Orchestra. That's another project that he's in every single year. And um, he's been doing it for many years. So he's got to be pretty good at what he does in order to be in that. So anyway, in case you're looking for something to purchase uh, by Jeff Scott Soto, this came out a few years ago. It's not a new album. Wide Awake in My Dreamland by Jeff Scott Soto, who was lead singer of Journey. Okay? And um, who knows? I, I mean, I don't think Jeff would have stayed uh, forever with journey, but I think he may have, uh, hung around for a few years. I mean, it would have paid some bills and that guy, um, he deserves to get paid. That's all I can say about Jeff Scott Soto. He's another one of these great singers out there. Uh, people like Robbie LeBlanc and Kent Hilly, Jeff Scott Soto, uh, they're all brilliant and they all deserve to earn some, some money, but, you know, we're in a strange time when it comes to the rock world. Uh, we can hope things change, but I don't see any changes on the horizon that would um, allow. You know, Jeff could be the lead singer for Van Halen. He could sing both. the, the He could sing the Dave parts and the Sammy parts. That's how good the guy is. And uh, he would kill it because he's got that attitude. He could be both of those characters. He's listened to this music his whole life and he could mimic, but he could also wind up sounding like either one of those two guys. So that's my opinion, and it's my opinion only. So if you have an opinion, you're over on Patreon, you want to put in your two cents worth, you want to buy me a coffee, send a message about, hey, you're wrong about Soto. He was the wrong guy at the wrong time. And we can have a, a little argument or, or friendly debate about it. That's fine. Uh, I appreciate the support of the channel. I, have, I also appreciate uh, this gentleman who goes by JB. Okay, JB is a big, big donor and supporter of this channel. He knows what I'm up against when it comes to the algorithm. And he has uh, stepped forward again to help um, keep this channel going. So I appreciate that. Um, I am kind of looking for like a Michael Bloomberg oligarch to just float the channel for the rest of its existence. And then I can kind of kick back and talk about even more crazy things than I already do. So yeah, um, thanks to JB and thanks to all of you who are supporting the channel via Patreon, YouTube memberships, and also 
the, the brand new buy me a coffee feature where you can just give one time and say something hopefully decent. Um, I appreciate those. God bless everyone. Please pray for peace in the Middle East. We're starting to see a humanitarian crisis now uh, in Gaza. And I don't care which side of the uh, equation or which side of the political divide you're on here. Um, it's really sad when when kids are, are being hurt uh, and the kids didn't do anything wrong. The kids are just, they, they don't know. You're, you're born and you don't choose where you're going to be born you're just born into this world and then things happen and so we need to pray that that situation just gets better and improves because um thousands of lives now are just at risk on both sides so we need to just say hey maybe some peace here maybe some diplomacy i'm not an expert in diplomacy but there's got to be something that can be done to stop all of the fighting and bloodshed over there. But uh, I don't know. I'm not smart enough to uh, have a solution to that. So we have to rely on God. Maybe God knows um, what should happen next. All right. I'm sure God does know. And I'm just saying maybe because what else is there, folks? We have nothing left. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.